we are now seeing the culmination of a months long ploy by Donald Trump to delegitimize this election because he knows the odds of him just winning legitimately are diminishing. He could still win fair and square. That's a possibility. However, he knows that there has to be some plan in place to get him to cling to power if Joe Biden pulls ahead. And he is using his bully pulpit, the institutional advantage that he has as an incumbent president, to make sure that he wins by all means necessary, even if that means cheating. So he's been griping about mail-in ballots, lying about how they lead to fraud. Now, this is a lie, but he's been conditioning his supporters. So now most people who support Donald Trump probably buy into his lies about how dangerous it is to vote by mail, and they will most likely show up to vote in person. However, Democratic Party voters will be more likely to vote by mail, probably being more concerned about the pandemic than Donald Trump supporters. And so what we're going to see is a lot of people vote by mail who are Democratic and a lot of people who are Republican show up in person to vote for Donald Trump. So he tweeted this out. The election should end on November 3rd, not weeks later. Think about what he's saying here. He is literally calling for us to invalidate millions of ballots because it has never been the case that any state has certified the results of an election on election day. That's never happened. We've seen projections of who will win in the media because they basically take their data analysts and they crunch the numbers and make an educated prediction based on who is ahead in certain states. But it's never been the case that states have finished the count and certified the results on the same day. But what he's saying is, listen, all of the votes that come in on November 3rd, that's it. Whatever doesn't get counted isn't getting counted. And he has lawyers ready to uh, basically try to stop the votes from being counted the minute the clock strikes 12.01. Now, David Pakman made a, a really good point that, you know, while the polls are closing in Hawaii, for example, well, it's already November 4th in New York on the East Coast. So, I mean, Donald Trump, it doesn't even make sense what he's saying, but this is all his ploy to cling to power. Because what is probably going to end up happening is a lot of Republican Party voters will show up in person, those votes will get counted first, and it will look like Donald Trump has a pretty sizable lead. However, as states shift to counting the mail-in and absentee ballots, well, we may see the results change. And so what Trump is trying to get his supporters to believe is that that's actually rat fuckery that's happening. It's not just that we're counting the mail-in ballots, which we're expecting to lean heavily in favor of the Democratic Party. That's just Democrats stealing the election. That is called the red mirage. It is not something that is illegitimate. It's not electoral theft or fraud. It's just that we are at a certain point, the states are at a certain point, point in the process of counting the ballots. There's nothing nefarious about that. But Donald Trump wants people to believe it's nefarious because he wants to try to try to use that as ammunition to steal this election. Because what is he going to do? Well, uh, if it does look as if he's in the lead, he is going to prematurely declare victory even if he has not won. So Jonathan Swan of Axios details Trump's plan to declare a premature victory. In this article, that isn't surprising, but I mean, nonetheless, it still is pretty terrifying. He explains, President Trump has told confidants he'll declare victory on Tuesday night if it looks like he's ahead, according to three sources familiar with his private comments. That's even if the Electoral College outcome still hinges on large numbers of uncounted votes in key states like Pennsylvania. Speaking to reporters on Sunday evening, Trump denied that he would declare victory prematurely before adding, I think it's a terrible thing when states are allowed to tabulate ballots for a long period of time after the election is over. Trump has privately talked through this scenario in some detail in the last few weeks, describing plans to walk up to a podium on election night and declare he has won. For this to happen, his allies expect he would need to either win or have commanding leads in Ohio, Florida, North Carolina, Texas, Iowa, Arizona, and Georgia. Trump's team is preparing to falsely claim that mail-in ballots counted after November 3rd, a legitimate count expected to favor Democrats, are evidence of election fraud. Many prognosticators say that on election night, Trump will likely appear ahead in Pennsylvania, though the state's final outcome could change substantially as mail-in ballots are counted over the following days. Trump's team is preparing to claim baselessly that if that process changes the outcome in Pennsylvania from the picture on election night, then Democrats would have stolen the election. Trump's advisors have been laying the groundwork for this strategy for weeks, but this is the first account of Trump explicitly discussing his election night intentions. Now, we're about to find out what happens if he's able to do this. He can't pull this off if it's a blowout and Joe Biden wins 
pretty quickly and decisively. So this really will hinge on a few key battleground states. Now, the reason why people are worried about this is because if Trump uses his bully pulpit and starts partying at the White House as if he won, well, that can create this sort of bandwagon effect where corporate media will feel pressured to uh, respond to OAN and Fox News, likely announcing that Donald Trump has, in fact, won. Now, it is the case that since 2000, which is when basically... Fox News announced that George W. Bush had won and other corporate media outlets followed suit. They did make some changes. So that way, there isn't a likely scenario where one media outlet will announce and then we'll see this domino effect. Basically, the New York Times lays all of this out in an article. The data analysts of all networks, including Fox News, they're actually separated from the news anchors who are reporting on the results as they come. So that way, these data analysts won't feel pressured to make the call too early and producers won't be in their ear about, you know, pressure them to say who won or will win. So that is something that is encouraging. The problem, however, is that even if Donald Trump says that he won and outlets say Trump falsely claims that he won, his supporters aren't going to listen to the news outlets. So just the mere fact that he is speaking this into existence, they're going to take his word as if it's gospel. And they'll think, okay, well, he he won. He said he won. So I trust him over the fake news media. So he won. And so he's setting up the situation where his supporters are going to sow chaos as they believe the media or Democrats are trying to steal this election away from Donald Trump, when in actuality, that's not happening. Now, what could they do? Who knows? I mean, they could try to stop more votes from being counted. They could disrupt the counts, intimidate voters at the polls, depending on how early he tries to declare victory. And we don't necessarily know how this is going to play out, although, again, we'll find out soon. But Trump is hinting that violence might actually occur. So as Lachlan Markey of Daily Beast explains, a Supreme Court decision extending time frames for states to count mail-in votes may result in physical violence, President Donald Trump predicted on Monday. They made a very dangerous situation, and I mean physically dangerous, Trump said at a rally in Scranton, Pennsylvania. He was referring to Supreme Court decisions allowing officials in Pennsylvania and North Carolina to continue accepting and counting mail-in ballots in the days after Election Day. They did a very bad thing for the state. They did a bad thing for the this nation, Trump said of the decision, the danger that could be caused by that extension, and especially when you know what goes on in Philadelphia, he added. Trump and his allies have described mail-in votes tallied after Election Day as tantamount to election fraud and insisted that a winner of the presidential contest should be declared on Tuesday. So understand what he's saying here. He's not technically advocating for violence, so, you know, he's speaking in a way that gives him plausible deniability, but what he's saying is, because these states are going to be able to count all of the ballots, and since that might take a while, that's going to lead to violence. Well, where's the violence going to come from? He knows where it's going to come from. His supporters, who over the weekend have been shutting down highways and bridges to intimidate voters, and literally ran the Biden campaign out of Texas. I mean, he knows that they're not going to believe the media. They're going to believe Donald Trump. So as we try to warn voters that we might not get the results on election day, we warn them about the possibility of a red mirage situation where it seems as if Donald Trump is ahead from the in-person votes and then the mail-in votes tip it in Biden's favor. He is trying to undermine our attempt to inform voters. And he's trying to use the red mirage at worst to seal the election, but at best to sow chaos and division throughout the country using his very loyal cultist supporters who will do whatever he wants at the behest of uh, his presidency. And it's not like they're only implying that, you know, counting all of the votes is tantamount to Democrats stealing the election. His advisors are saying explicitly, if we count the votes past November 3rd, past today, then that is election theft. That is them stealing this election. It's a different world now, George, and that's why we're trying to turn out our supporters. We feel good about it. And one final thing, George, if you speak with many smart Democrats, they believe that President Trump will be ahead on election night, probably getting 280 electorals somewhere in that range. And then they're going to try to steal it back after the election. We believe that we will be over 290 electoral votes on election night. So no matter what they try to do, what kind of hijinks or lawsuits or whatever kind of nonsense they try to pull off, we're still going to have enough electoral votes to get President Trump. So, reelected. Now, that wasn't some random Trump supporter. That is a senior Trump campaign advisor who literally just said on national television to no pushback, mind you, that if 
Donald Trump is ahead based on where they're at when they're counting the votes, well, if Joe Biden somehow pulls ahead, that is tantamount to Democrats stealing this election. So he's literally saying that if all the votes are counted and who is in the lead shifts throughout the process as we count all the votes, that is election theft. That is insanity. This is anti-democratic rhetoric. They don't want the votes to be counted. They want to just look at who voted in person, assuming that that will most likely be Trump supporters disproportionately, and then stop all the votes. Stop the rest of the votes from being counted. Pause where we're at when Trump is in the lead, and then that's it. We claim victory. But that's not all, because Trump's deputy campaign manager sent out this email to supporters warning that it's actually the Democrats who are trying to delegitimize this election as they warn about a red mirage situation, saying Democrats are panicking because Joe Biden has not run up a large enough lead in early votes in battleground states, and they know that President Trump's in-person votes on election day will make up the difference and propel him to victory. Biden's political operatives have been distributing talking points and research to delegitimize election day results by coaching surrogates to refer to the president's election day success as a red mirage. The operatives are advising surrogates and media to create a smokescreen by casting blame all around imagining postal delays or falsely claiming that mail-in ballots that have simply not been returned should be considered legitimate votes that need to be counted. None of this will be true, but it will be held up as proof that President Trump's victory is a so-called red mirage. No one should fall for it. Now, this is, of course, incorrect. This isn't Joe Biden's surrogates talking about the red mirage. It is data analysts who are warning about the red mirage, anticipating more Republicans to vote in person and more Democrats to vote by mail. It's not a talking point from the Joe Biden campaign. And all that people are saying is that we should count all of the votes. See, the problem is that what they want to do is if somebody mails out their, their ballot and it doesn't get there on election night by November 3rd, well, even if they sent it in weeks ago and it's postmarked for uh, before November 3rd, they want to say, nope, that is no longer uh, acceptable. That ballot is illegitimate. They want to invalidate that ballot, not count that ballot. And the argument that they're making, well, if we count that ballot, that's Democrats stealing the election. I mean, this is projection because that's exactly what they're trying to do. Now, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen. Like, it could be an anticlimactic evening, right? Joe Biden could end up winning quickly. Trump could end up winning quickly. We don't know what's going to happen. But even if Donald Trump isn't able to steal this election by using the red mirage to, you know, create some sort of legal battle or try to stop the counting process. Still, the amount of chaos that he's trying to sow is truly astounding.